I'm George Moore, and uh, I was born in Montreal, Canada, in 1925. And six months later, my parents moved to Worcester, Massachusetts, <coughs> where I grew up. I went to the went to West Boston Street Grammar School, North High School, and as a senior in North High School, I enlisted in the Navy because my Canadian cousin had been killed in Europe. He was a pilot, <clears throat> and I was very patriotic. My family was very patriotic. I was only 17, and I went to Samson Naval Training Base up in Samson, New York on Lake Seneca, very cold. Uh, from there, I was sent to, after I graduated from there, I was sent to radio school at Miami University, Oxford, Ohio, and became, uh, was there for about six months, became a radio operator, <clears throat> and was sent to the West Coast, to Oceanside, California, to the Marine Base, where I was assigned to a communication control team, which means we were a landing team with the amphibious forces. And we would put, uh, put a radio on my back and go ashore with the troops from the landing craft. From Oceanside, California, I was shipped to California, to uh, uh, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, to the Navy base there, and was uh, assigned to the USS Bell Grove, which uh, is an LSD, landing ship dock. It was uh, supposedly our secret weapon. It was a, uh, a ship that was hollow inside, could submerge six feet, and 18 landing craft with troops or tanks would drive in the back, and they'd pump it out, and we would go to the invasion site and uh, then release our troops. And I was on that for um, almost uh, 14 months. I was on the Belgrove. Uh, my first uh, assignment was, our first assignment was the invasion of uh, the Marshall Islands. My first landing was at the Kwajalein. Um, I went ashore with the troops, set up my radio, dug a little foxhole, and stayed about six or eight hours. Kwajalein was not a uh, real bad fight for us. We took it in a short time. Um, but uh, I, they sent me back to the ship in about six or eight hours. And, uh, we stayed there for maybe a week and repaired ships and uh, took on wounded. And then from there, uh, I went back to uh, Pearl Harbor and we were assigned to another invasion site in the South Pacific. It's a small island, Emeru, in the St. Matthias group. It was surrounded by Japanese islands. It was near Guadalcanal. We made a small landing there with some Marines and uh, only stayed, uh, we left that night under the cover of darkness, darkness because uh, the Japanese had planes in the area. Um, went back to Hawaii and did some more amphibious training, and then we were sent to Saipan. We did the invasion at Saipan, which was an old uh, Japanese base, so it was well fortified. Uh, we. Um, well, that was in June of 1944, and uh, I was uh, I was uh, still a uh, radio man on the uh, landing team, and went af went ashore, set up our radios again, and contact. We did stay there a lot longer. We stayed there for two nights, and while the troops moved inland, <clears throat> and then went back to the Bell Grove, and we stayed at Saipan for quite a while, a month or more. And we acted as a hospital ship and as a repair ship and a supply ship. Uh, and uh, uh, that was a rather a nasty area because there was a lot of fighting going on between the Japanese and, of course, uh, the American troops. And it w they had a big bay there, and a lot of the bodies would get into the bay and. Uh, 
after a while, it was a very terrible stench of, uh, in that whole area. That's one of the things I remember vividly. Uh, from Saipan, we, uh, a month later, we went to Tinian, which is in the same island group, and we landed in Tinian, which was not, it was an uneventful landing, not a lot of, comp not a lot of uh, combat for us. Uh, later on, the troops did uh, have a lot of combat. Uh, from Tinian and back to uh, Pearl Harbor, and uh, we were sent to the South Pacific, and we did maneuvers in many of the islands down there, and we were at the uh, sent to Leyte for the invasion of the Philippines. We were in the same same uh, landing group as General MacArthur. I saw him go ashore. It was a very great um, uh, program they had set up. It was for him to be photographed and for him to say, I have returned. You know, we stayed, uh, didn't stay at Lady too long. We went back to one of the islands, and about a month later, we made the landing at Langayan Gulf in the Philippines. Uh, that's uh, where we had we started having the suicide planes, Japanese suicide planes, and uh, we would uh, after we landed our troops, we sat in the harbor, and the uh, we had smoke screens every night to camouflage the ships. Um, and uh, towards the end, the Japanese instead of uh, coming in low, they would drop their bombs from on high. And uh, my closest uh, brush of death was a bomb landed about 30 feet from me, but failed to explode. It was a dud and soaked me. Uh, uh, later on, we uh, moved around into the harbor closer and uh, took on the wounded again and the sick and, uh, and uh, gave, the, uh, gave the NAR supplies. Uh, that was at uh, Langayan Gulf, Luzon. Um, then we went back to uh, Guam and refitted our ship. Uh, and uh, prepared for another invasion. In, in between these invasions, we would act as a cargo ship and uh, carry troops and supplies between our captured islands. and. Uh, uh, act as anything that, w that they asked us. Uh, and the uh, motto of our ship, which was LSD-2, was the two can do. So we did everything that was asked, uh, asked of us. Uh, we only lost two members of our crew to combat, uh, and, uh, but we lost a lot of our troops that we had carried. Our last invasion was Iwo Jima, um, we uh, prepared for that because it was colder than we were used to. Um, Iwo Jima is a little farther north towards Japan. Uh, we landed, I landed with the troops. It was a volcanic uh, island and it was very difficult to dig a foxhole because it would kept caving in and uh, uh, covering up my radio, uh, and I only stayed on Iwo Jima on the beach there for, for, uh, one, uh, for one night, uh, but we stayed in, at, in, the, in the harbor at Iwo Jima for a month and did a lot of uh, uh, hospital work and so forth and supplying and repairing ships. And uh, Iwo Jima was, uh, Saipan was where we started sending our B-29s to bomb Japan. And Saipan was originally going to be the uh, emergency landing base. And we were, we hadn't even taken the, the island was not even secured and uh, B-29 made an emergency landing there 
on an old Japanese airfield, which we had bombed. The pilot did almost travel the whole length of the island before he stopped, but he did save his crew. Um, after Iwo Jima, I was sent back to uh, Pearl Harbor to the amphibious operating base. Did some more training there and was assigned to a control team, uh, another landing control team. And we were sent out to be put on the PCS-1418, patrol craft small, a very small wooden patrol ship where we were preparing for the invasion of Japan. We uh, uh, went down into the uh, Philippine area and uh, uh, did some landings with uh, troops down there. And a typhoon came towards us and all the ships were sent out to sea uh, to ride it out. Uh, we uh, were damaged severely and had to go into dry dock. Being a wooden ship, it was crushed by the by the waves, and we spent two weeks in a in a um, dry dock. And that's when uh, World War II ended, when we were in the dry dock. However, we were still assigned to go to Japan, so we headed out towards Okinawa, and we hit another typhoon, and we got damaged again. Went into dry dock in Okinawa, and got out. And then we were still preparing to go instead of the invasion of J Japan, we were going to the uh, occupation of Japan. On the way, we hit another typhoon, and this time we didn't make it. The ship sunk, and uh, we came ashore at a small island called Katakashima, and uh, the ship, being wooden, uh, came ashore the next day on its side. Uh, we lived in an abandoned Okinawan village, uh, when the ship came ashore, we went back aboard, and we still got canned goods that were on there. So we lived lived on the island for three weeks. Uh, the Navy knew we were there, and they airdropped us some food. And Okinawa was in such a mess because of the typhoon. They said, you might as well stay there. Uh, we were there for three weeks, and uh, we had a good time. There was a destroyer that had been blown ashore at the other end of the island. They had athletic equipment. <clears throat> we made a ball field out of one of the Okinawan gardens, and we had played baseball while we were there. Uh, we were finally taken off and taken back to Pearl Harbor, and uh, I eventually got back to the United States uh, for uh, I got home, it was the first time I was home for over two years, uh, into Worcester in uh, Christmas Eve of uh, 1945, I guess it would be, almost 1945. And I had a 30-day leave and was asked to uh, re-enlist in the Navy and I decided I didn't think I wanted to. I was. Uh, um, I had had enough of the Navy, so I, I uh, applied for, uh, to University of Mass. It was still Mass State College on the GI Bill and was accepted that October. Uh, and I couldn't get into the four-year course because it was full, so they said take the two-year uh, associate degree course, so I did in horticulture and got my associate degree in horticulture and then went on and got my bachelor's degree in horticulture. <clears throat> I worked in the florist field and the landscaping field for uh, five to eight years <clears throat> and uh, and then I was uh, offered a job at Massachusetts Mutual Life Insurance uh, in Springfield. They were expanding and they needed someone to oversee their um, landscaping and uh, lawns. And so I uh, wasn't sure I wanted to do anything like that, but I went in and 
was convinced I should take the job, so I moved to this area. I moved to Hamden and into Wilbraham and into Longmeadow. And uh, spent 35 years at uh, Mass Mutual and ended up doing, besides the responsibility of the grounds and the buildings, I um, took over transportation and we helped buy their helicopters and I often wonder how a horticulturist got into the hel helicopter field, but I did. Uh, I, uh, when I got out of the Navy and went to UMass, I was married the first year I was there to a Worcester girl. We had three children and uh, who now live and we have four grandchildren. Uh, my wife became an art teacher in the school systems of Wilbraham, and uh, we still live in the uh, in uh, Longmeadow. Long um, I uh, sixty years ago I was in the Navy, and it seems like some of the things that happened happened yesterday, and. Uh, I try to keep in ta touch with my ship. We do have reunions. The USS Belgrove has reunions every year for the last 20 years. It, uh, the Belgrove uh, also participated in uh, the, inv to the invasion of, uh, of um, um, uh, uh, the Korean War and uh, to the Vietnam War. So we have three age groups at this, at this reunion. And there, the last one, there was only 35 of us left from the World, from the World War II group. So the, uh, the younger people are kind of taking over now. And each year, there are less and less of us uh, from the World War II group. But it is great to get together with the people you served with. <clears throat> and we have had coming to these reunions, troops that we had carried, they had found out about it and they come because we get to know these people. They would be on board sometimes for six weeks and they became very friendly. We became friends with all of them and uh, when they went ashore, it was like losing your, your buddies. So they came back because they liked our ship. So it was a very uh, enjoyable, the enjoyable is a very, very, uh, very uh, the unions are very enjoyable to me. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, I've included everything that had happened in my uh, Navy career, but uh, uh, I was certainly think it was a great uh, learning experience. I grew up uh, overnight uh, with all the responsibility, responsibilities given to 17 or 18 year old people and uh, I came out thinking I had to make up those three years and do things uh, quickly. Um, I thank the uh, studio here for doing this for the veterans and uh, I hope this uh, is enjoyable to people. Thank you. <laughs>